Hello everyone, my name is Crystal Ruiz. I'm an educator here at the Crocker Art Museum and I'm also joined today by Mallory Marsh. You want to hi say Crystal, hi? hi everybody. <laughs> and as well as our producers, Houghton and Brian. And they're going to be kind of in the back end today. And Mallory Marsh is going to be um, kind of observing the comments section. So feel free at any time to kind of jump in, um, leave some of your thoughtful kind of comments on there. We'll be observing that throughout this program. And I'm really excited to be here today in this Gallery Bites Halloween edition. And I have something very fun planned for all of us for sure. And so currently in Gallery 309, uh, third floor of the museum. And we're gonna be looking at this piece today, okay? And I wanted to start us off with just a very slow looking activity. We're gonna take a few moments to really just observe this artwork, get our thoughts in. And as we do that, I really want you to think about what is it that we're looking at? Um, do you recognize anything in this painting? Does it look like something that might be seen during this time of year, during Halloween? And how we're going to approach this is I really want us just to take a moment. We're going to start at the very top of the painting and then we're going to move our eyes down towards the middle all the way to the bottom. It's going to be a little bit silent for the next few minutes and we're just going to observe it. So here we go. And again, start at the very top, move your eyes down towards the middle, all the way to the bottom. So if you're out there with us, if it's at school or at home and you have access to commenting in the chat, feel free to add in there. What was something that you noticed in this painting? Did it look like anything for you? Um, maybe you can talk about maybe the details in this piece. And just to get us started, I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about what it is we're looking at today. I know when I first came into the gallery and I approached this, I almost saw this like mask-like figure. I was really unsure of what it really was that I was looking at, but I kind of went towards these two big kind of dark circles, and they reminded me of like eyes, something popping out of a mask. And so you move kind of down and I see maybe like some kind of facial, facial features, but it wasn't until I got really close and started reading a little bit about the artist um, that I, was able to really see what it was. And so what we have here is a couple that's kind of, you know, dancing together or just kind of standing side by side. And you have a male figure on this side, all right, on the kind of the left side of the painting. And then you have this female figure on the other side of the painting. And I took some time to really dig deep into this artist for specifically the theme we're focusing on, which is Happy Halloween. And I got into this kind of huge, um, in a sense, memory, <laughs> like really thinking of all these beautiful memories when I had when I was younger. And so the artist even learning about him was a bigger impact for why I really wanted to choose this piece. And so the title of this work is Pareja, in English, it translates to couple. And it's by an artist, his name is Jose Maria de Servin. He was born in La Piedad, Michoacan. And so we're gonna show you a picture of what that looks like. And it's really just a beautiful, big, vast city in Mexico. And when we think of Michoacan, um, you can also think of kind of California, the state, right? And uh, Michoacan, there's just so many little cities, there's just so many towns that really make up the entire state. And La Piedad is one of them. And when you think of the word La Piedad, it translates into mercy. And so uh, looking at this piece, I just see so many beautiful details. And Jose Maria de Servin definitely takes his time to 
really color it, get all these beautiful details. And so I know we have a comment, so let's go ahead and hear what that is. So Ms. Crystal, Amber in the chat is telling us it looks like two insects with faces and lots of arms and legs. Oh, I like that. It kind of does look like insects. I can kind of see it almost like centipede-like. You can see all these little kind of shapes coming out. I like that. Very cool comment. Thanks for sharing. And you can definitely see art from multiple perspectives, right? You can look at something and say, maybe it's bugs or maybe it's a face. And so everyone has a different way of viewing work. And so I think it's really neat um, that the artist leaves it open for us to really um, make, it, make it up to what we want it to be, right? And so going back to who the artist was, uh, he was born again in La Piedad in Michoacan in 1917. And the cool thing about him is he was really inspired by like Pablo Picasso, who was, you know, very interested in doing cubism art. And so um, the Servine was very much interested in that style alone. And when we look at this piece, you can kind of see those geometric shapes being used. And when I say geometric, I mean kind of shapes that are made out of multiple lines. They have corners. So I'm going to point out a couple of these shapes in here. When you look at maybe right here, it's almost a more rectangular shape that's made out of multiple lines. And cubism was a art movement that people were really gravitating during the early uh, 20th century. So between maybe 1910s to 1920s. And it was really just a form that people wanted to kind of make things look almost 3D like. If it was either a painting or a drawing or a sculpture, they mainly used geometric shapes in their art. And we have another comment. I love, Crystal, that you're telling us about the geometric shapes. We have some of our friends in the chat talking about the color as nice. well. They're saying things like colorful and playful. The colors make it have a lot of movement. Also very cheerful, nice. whether they're oh. people or animals, they look very cheerful. Very good. And then Donna specifically is pointing out the really deep reds Ooh. that you can see when you look really close. Very good, I love that. And so definitely when you look at this piece, there is a lot of color being used here for sure. And so what I like is it's kind of broken up where you have these very nice soft yellow tones in the background. And then you have these much darker ones that kind of overpower this end of the artwork, kind of towards the bottom. So he is really much playing with different types of values, some dark ones and some light ones. It's a very beautiful piece to look at and you kind of get lost in all of it that's here. And so that really brings it back to the idea of, you know, using that cubism style, right? You see all these different kind of triangles, rectangles, and squares being used throughout the painting. And then the colors are very vibrant and bold. And why did I choose this piece specifically for a Halloween theme? I want to kind of dive deep a little bit more about the artist and how that really influenced me to pick this piece for you all today. So my family, um, I'm very fortunate to have members who were born in towns really close by um, the Servin. My mom was born in Acuitzeramo in Michoacan. And so this is kind of like a city or a little town about a few hours away from La Piedad. And then um, my mom kind of grew up learning a lot about this big kind of tradition that happens during this period of time. And so when I think about Halloween season or the months to come, I really do fi uh, think about traditions. So before I move on to talking about a little bit about my traditions, I want you guys to kind of share in the chat, maybe what are your um, Halloween traditions? Are you a trick-or-treater? Are you someone who passes out the candy? Or maybe do you do something completely different during this time? I'd love to hear it. So feel free to chat on the comments and then I'll continue talking a little bit about the artist and then how that influenced me to kind of create also what I have here to present for you all today. And another fun fact too is this Ervin, he spent most of his you know, early adult years in Guadalajara, uh, Mexico. And he specifically started to focus being more in Jalisco. 
And that's where he um, really was a part of um, Los Jovenes de Pintores, like uh, when you translate that, it's like basically the young painters. And so he was a part of a lot of different cool things that were happening in Jalisco during his time, um, around the 1930s, I would say. And my dad is actually from a small town called San Marcos in Jalisco. And so it's really cool to be able to connect this artist and kind of follow his journey and also compare it to, you know, kind of my background, my family. And so when I think of Halloween, I think of also my preparation for a big celebration that's coming up on November, uh, November 1st, which is Dia de los Muertos, which is Day of the Dead. So you might have heard of this. There's definitely a lot of cool stuff out there right now. For example, there's a movie called Coco that Disney did that really talks about the traditions and the values that people have uh, during this period in preparation to Dia de los Muertos. And so that's kind of what I brought here for us is a small kind of um, altar that is made in households in Mexico. They do these beautiful big displays and we're gonna see some images in just a moment. And um, I think it's a really valuable thing to, for me personally, to have and continue to do, especially during this time. And so I'm gonna walk on over for just a moment. We have here, a small altar and um, in Mexico they're actually really huge people really go all out and create these beautiful displays and what we do during November 1st um, and this week is usually when you prepare for that big day so uh, I also participate on October 31st and dress up but I also take time to really celebrate the ancestors, those who have passed. And so what I have here is basically a small altar that honors those who are no longer with us. And it's an opportunity to really just um, celebrate their life. And so I wanted to share just a few little things with everyone, just like the artist um, who was born in Michoacan. I have this uh, picture of my grandparents. From my mom's side, we have Rosa and Silvino. They were born in um, Michoacan, specifically in Acuitzeramo, and so I have a picture of them. They've already, you know, passed away. But when I think of them, I think of all these beautiful things that they shared with me when I had time to be with them, which is, you know, my mom, my grandma Rosa loved flowers. She would spend time outside just like in her garden, um, beautiful, beautiful uh, nature outside. and. I also included these little cookies titled Marias. Um, it was either bread and coffee, su cafecito and su pan in the morning. And it was always like a huge thing in her household was to have coffee and bread in the morning and sometimes at night. So it was like double. And I feel like that's where my coffee um, addiction comes from. <laughs> it's because I constantly drink coffee and bread in the morning. And so I think of Mama Rosa whenever um, I'm you know, having coffee in the morning. And then Papa Silvino, um, he was always playing cards. So I brought these little cards in to kind of, you know, illustrate his huge kind of uh, just passion for always playing cards. You would find him in his bedroom just playing solitary and he was really good at it. He was an amazing card player. And we have another comment. I love Crystal learning more about your family members. Lynn in the chat is saying that she just happened to coincidentally catch this streaming right after gathering photos of her departed family oh, members. Oh, nice. I love that. So that's definitely a good way to kind of keep those people that once were here alive, being able to remember those memories. And it's, it's really great. Um, I'm glad that we're connecting in this way today. And so I'm going to keep going. I have a few more things that I want to share. This one is actually the only item that I have from one of my tios. Um, I was having a cool conversation with our producer earlier about how sometimes we would give family members just really random names uh, for no reason. It was just our nicknames they would get. And so I knew my uncle as Nacho for like the longest time. And it wasn't until today when I asked my mom, she was like, oh, his name was Ignacio. And I was like, what a huge difference from Nacho to Ignacio. It was a really cool um, way to just you know, remember him. And this was actually the one thing that he gave me 
uh, before he passed away. It's almost like a rosary uh, necklace and there's just so much beautiful detail. And so this is definitely, definitely one item I bring out during this time is just to kind of remember him in that way, especially since I don't have pictures of him. So this is one item for sure that I really hold dear and carry all the time. And then I really wanna show this picture too of my grandfather from my dad's side. Now, again, um, when we think of the artist, he was in Jalisco for quite a good time, creating murals and these huge, beautiful paintings. And I think of my grandpa, Jose, and um, he's just so handsome. I think that's where I get my mustache, you know, just kidding. <laughs> but I just love looking at this, you know, picture of him because he was very much just like gentleman and was always on his horses when he was in Mexico. And so just thinking about him today is very, you know, very precious thing for me. And a few other items that are here is just really things that rem we are reminded of, of them uh, when they were here, what they liked, or um, we're gonna show you some examples too of maybe some altars that are you know seen in Mexico because it's a huge day to just celebrate people you know they bring these marigolds and they put them all over their house they also create paths from their homes all the way to the Pantheon which is like the cemetery to guide those people back to those homes to be present on those special days and then you have candles like you can you know light up as many candles as you can and then it just really lightens up the house so you can feel a warm presence when they're here. And then my favorite thing to do, even though we're in a gallery, I couldn't really bring those goodies in, but we really fill up the room and the space with delicious foods, things that they like to eat. Like my grandparents, tamales, tacos. If I can think of every food they would eat constantly, they would definitely be displayed here on that special day so they can enjoy from those um, delicious foods as well. Yeah, we have another comment. We're getting some really nice warm shout outs in the chat. Crystal, Donna saying that she's learned a lot about this tradition over nice. the past few years from her in-laws who add to an altar for her father-in-law. Great, nice. Um, Lynn is really grateful for the, for the culture and the tradition. And then Amber is saying that it's a wonderful tradition and has a lot of value in helping people with their grief. Very good, I love that. And, and it is, it's, it's a great way to just celebrate and be happy that they were once here and then everything that they showed us definitely carries on I feel like I do a lot of these things still because they showed us and I'm very grateful for my parents who really always continue to every year um, just participate not only in Halloween but also in this big kind of celebration just because they grew up with that um, I had a great conversation with my mom about well what does Halloween mean for you and she was like well, I didn't know about it till I came here. When I moved here to the United States, it was all new. And it was the same thing for my dad, where it's like, they didn't know this existed until they came to the United States. And they wanted me and my older brother, uh, we used to always go trick or treating. And then once my younger brother came in too, we were always like celebrating Halloween. But I think for them, it was really because we would hear about it at school or we would, you know, see kids walking in our neighborhood ga gathering candy. So they wanted us to participate. But these were definitely something that got carried over and we continued to do during this time. And I just wanted to share just a, just a few more things with you. You might also see during this time period, the sugar schools. This is actually ceramics. And I, I caught this when I went to go visit uh, Mexico recently because I thought it was a really cool detail and calaveritas um, they're like sugar schools they're pretty much everywhere and they, they're definitely surrounding the altars during this time and this is actually one of my favorites this is a jarrito the thing that's holding the flowers here it is actually from Jalisco San Marcos where my dad is from and my grandpa is and they hand make everything. And so this is actually very unique because you will really only find it in their little um, town is this style of where they go out and they collect kind of the clay and they construct these really beautiful jars that you can drink out of. And I promise you drinking water out of this is like a different experience. It's like very earthy and fresh. And so um, it's just really cool to have items that you can only really find in those kind of traditional places. 
And so I'm going to kind of scooch back. And you've got some place. people in the chat here, Crystal, that are inspired to build altars of their own this Yay, year. Lynn good. and Barbara are both, both going to do it. I love that. Yes. And it's really, really up to you what you want to display during this time. It could be very personal uh, where I know here what you're looking at is a more kind of Latino style, uh, specifically uh, for me, it's more like influenced by uh, my parents' kind of style. And so you see kind of these vi very vibrant um, colors here. But you can create an altar however you want that you feel will honor, you know, that person you want to commemorate during this time. And so November 1st through the 2nd is really just a time for you to celebrate. You can even just think of memories. I know most of the time we might go into just prayers and wish them well. And it's just really nice to be able to think of them during this period. So hopefully you also shared some of your Halloween traditions with us in the chat. I would love to hear maybe um, what you do during this time. Maybe you're also someone who prepares an altar or maybe you're just someone who likes to dress up. I know this Halloween, I'm gonna be a very big butterfly. <laughs> That's my Halloween costume. And so I'm excited to be able to participate also on the 31st, but then I also like going out in the community and just kind of participating in what they offer out there too. Um, I know it's a big thing now, they're trying to really bring back the, you know, the beauty of what Dia de los Muertos really is. And so, one thing that I wanted to do with everyone today is I also wanted to encourage you to take the time to sketch a little with me today. And honestly, um, when I say sketch, it's really just a quick kind of drawing. Don't think about trying to get every little detail. It's really just an outline. You can start off with some basic shapes, the lines that you see. If you get a chance, add in some shadows because there's a lot of shadows going on in this painting. You can kind of see right here. There's quite a bit of shadows going on in the corners. And so you can gather your pencil, your paper, anything you have that you can use to kind of draw with us today. And we're gonna just spend a few minutes kind of looking at the piece one more time, and then we're going to sketch what we see. And if you wanna throw in a little twist, maybe you can add in some kind of cool mask-like um, detail in there, or what maybe you can try to Think about if you can come up with your own costume, what would it look like? So I'm gonna grab my paper and my pencil and we're gonna get started. Feel free to go ahead and jump in and we're just gonna spend a few minutes sketching this artwork. So Crystal, your butterfly costume allowed Amber to think of a memory she had as a kid. Their family was really big on handmade costumes for oh. Halloween and her dad made her a butterfly costume one year. Oh, I love that. I think, Making your own costumes is like the funnest thing ever. <laughs> I think I made almost every costume when I was younger. I once was Cinderella and my mom made this huge, beautiful dress for me. And it was like the coldest winter. I used to live in Fresno when I was younger. And so my mom was like, oh, we're gonna go trick or treating. And so I remember putting this big dress and it was just freezing. So I had to go back and get a big jacket. But making costumes with family is like, the most like precious thing in my opinion so keep them coming i want to hear more <laughs> keep them coming all right so i'm going to get started on my sketch it's going to be a little quiet and that's okay and the neat thing about this piece is there's definitely a lot of shapes you can be using. So if you're someone who's like, oh, I've never really sketched before, that's okay. Just go ahead and practice. There's really just some simple shapes you can keep kind of repeating, like triangle, square, kind of like a half triangle, and it goes into a rectangle. So really look at those shapes that you first see, and then just try to kind of capture them as you move along. So don't worry about mistakes. It's really just practice. As I'm drawing this, I can still just picture a mask here. <laughs> I can't get over the mask that I see here.
Now the cool, you know, the cool thing about sketching too, it helps you put like, you know, what you're visually seeing onto paper, right? You start to notice things that you might have not seen the first time. So I, I think that's why I really enjoy taking time out of my day to just like pick up a paper and a pencil and start, you know, sketching a little bit because you do see things a little bit different when you really take the time to analyze and just pay close attention to just what's in front of you. So just a few more seconds. And again, the cool thing about um, having these pieces here at the museum, if you ever want to come to the Crocker and see it in person, remember it's in gallery 309. So you can come and hang out here, bring your maybe started sketch and you can finish it when you're in here. All right, well, this is what I have so far. <laughs> I think I'm getting pretty good at like getting all those shadows in. I'm starting on that. So you can definitely keep working on it. Um, and just, if you, again, you can come back and check it out in person. And so this piece today, I'm just looking at it. I, f I feel so grateful to be able to present, you know, these things to you all. I definitely wanted to share also like one of my biggest memories during happy Halloween season um, only because I feel like this is kind of the time to really just enjoy and look back at some of the cool stuff you might have done or maybe what you want to do for these next few days and so I really appreciate being able to look at this piece and just visualize all these cool memories from really wanting to share with you guys today this altar and kind of this um, tradition that I want to continue to carry on uh, during Dia de los Muertos. And then um, also I hope I en I'm encouraging you to do that as well. Uh, try something new, all right? You might like it and want to keep picking it up and doing it later on. But I have to share one of my favorite Halloween memories and it has to be the year my dad, my goodness, if he's watching, he's amazing. Um, when we were much younger, he used to love dressing up as well. And where we used to live in Fresno, we used to have these very long, big bushes kind of at the entrance of our home. And he really loved gardening, but he decided one year he was really going to utilize it. <laughs> and he went ahead and put some clowns and some big figures outside, and he hid in the bushes. So every time a kid would come up, he would pop up and scare them. My goodness, people loved it that our neighbors started to join in and would stand and kind of participate. And I think at some point we had to stop because nobody was coming to get candy from us. <laughs> so it's just really cool to be able to think of these memories that I have when I was such a, you know, when I was a child. I, I really love this season. I love, you know, the months to come because it's really just a lot of times to think of just traditions. What do you do during this time? And so before I go, it, I would love for sure to see maybe some comments of what are you going to be this Halloween? So I'll give you a few minutes to kind of add in the chat. If you're going to dress up, what is your costume this year? Any costumes? I told you mine. I'm going to be a butterfly. Mallory, what are you going to be? You know, my son and husband and I watch a lot of sci-fi movies. Ooh. So we are doing Aliens and I will be Lieutenant Ellen Ripley. Nice! Yeah. I like that. Very and cool. Which is kind of sweatpants, which I'm not <laughs> upset about. There you go. You're excited, aren't you? <laughs> I, when you said you were cold that Halloween, I had a lot of memories of very cold Halloween. So I'm grateful for my... Oh, sweatpants yes. and closed-toed shoes this year. <laughs> definitely, I agree. If you have a costume that definitely needs some sweats under, it's going to be pretty cold, I think. <laughs> so be prepared for that. How about you, Howen? Do you know what you're going to dress up as? No? We got a handshake. I, uh, I heard something about a tin man, but I'm not so sure <laughs> that's still happening. Brian? Uh, I'm going to be a ghost. A ghost. Oh, nice. 
Why a ghost? Uh, because I have a sheet of uh, fabric. <laughs> a sheet of fabric. I love it. I love it. That's great. Awesome. I think that's cool. It's going to be fun. All right. And so just to kind of um, get us thinking, I just want to finish up talking about just a little bit more details about this at Veen. If you're still putting in the comments, we'll go back to see what you're going to be this Halloween. But just to give us a little bit more context of the, oh, we have a comment. Nice. We got one, not this year, but a future year. Uh, Amber is, is hoping to dress like Miss Peacock holding a candlestick from nice. Clue. I like that. Very cool. Thanks, Amber. That's a great costume idea. All right. I like that. So really quick, um, I also wanted to share that the artist is also a muralist and a sculptor. So when we think of murals, we think of these like really large scaled paintings uh, that are mostly done either on the side of a wall, of a building. Uh, nowadays, they do a bunch of murals also indoors. I know here at the museum, we have a very large one in a hallway. Um, so murals are starting to be very recognizable throughout here in Sacramento. So if you ever come and visit, if you're not from Sacramento, go check out the cool murals that are in downtown. But the Servine was very fascinated in being able to do these really huge, large scale paintings. And at some point he was working with these, you know, kind of amazing artists like Orozco, who also did these beautiful murals. And most of the imagery is very influenced by um, imagery that you see in Mexico from like you know, floor, uh, flowers, people out in the community doing things. So they really try to tie it into just the culture around them. And another person he also was uh, working on a project was Diego Rivera. So if you ever heard of Diego Rivera, um, he also was a muralist. He did these really beautiful, vibrant um, depictions of just what the culture is like out in Mexico. And so that was a really cool fun fact for me because I also do murals when I can and I think it's another canvas, right? When you look at a huge wall, sometimes you know like that's the wall I want to create art on. And so being able to hear that this, um, these artists are doing things in a larger scale is just really cool. And so hearing that Servin was doing that for quite a while during the 1930s, I think that's what influenced him to go to Jalisco and spend time out there really just connecting with the artists that were there and creating things that really uh, resonated with the culture. And so he was a big fan of doing murals. And when I say sculpture, I'm thinking of more uh, three-dimensional stuff. So when we look back at this painting, we are looking at something that's very flat, right? Very 2D. But when we talk about, again, the style of cubism, their goal is to try to make it look almost like if it's 3D, like if it's popping out uh, to the viewer. But he liked to do things that were actually physically three-dimensional, that he can walk around the space. Um, you know, uh, I think some of the mediums he likes was like clay. So he did a lot of clay sculptures. So it's cool to be able to look back at some of his work and know that he is not just a painter. He's also a muralist. He's a sculptor. And many of his forms take up kind of these more geometric like. So a lot of these shapes that you see here. And so that's just a little bit more about the Servine and another reason why I chose him for today's Gallery Bites, um, kind of special edition. So it's really fun. Um, and just to kind of wrap up today's Gallery Bite, one, I just want to say thank you for joining us. There's a lot of insightful comments today and hopefully you're still thinking about what you want to do for this Halloween. I really highly encourage you guys to research a little bit more about, you know, Dia de los Muertos. I'm not sure if you got a chance to show some of those cool images, but you got to see some of them can get really big, right? And then if you like cooking, spend some time cooking in the kitchen and think about what were some of those things that people like um, that have already passed. Like I mentioned that my grandparents love tamales, so I'm going to try to make tamales. I know my mom's cooking some right now, so maybe I'll just have her mail some or drop some off. <laughs> I, I'm going to try. But I just want to say thank you guys for joining us. Come check out this piece, Gallery 309 here at the museum. And I wish you guys a very safe, happy Halloween. Go out and get some candy or just spend some time with family. 
So thanks for joining us.